real time output people are also taking some parallel parallel approaches like edge computing fog computing okay these things are emerging gradually for example mobile uh, ai based mobile phone solutions one of the good examples of the edge computing as well so pay off results benefit in fact we already has covered so we have to take take care of the backup plans if if our algorithm fails if any other any other subsidiaries which we are taking help in terms of the research progress if that fails so what will be the backup plan such that we can we can overcome that particular scenario and remember that whenever we are starting a project we we, we will have a certain sort of funding and we will have certain sort of deadline it may be a deadline of 2 to 3 years we have to wrap up the project within that deadline and and definitely we have to report government or any other agencies wherever we are taking the funding so uh, so there should be a backup plan that if if plan x is not working such that we can take the uh, take go for the y planning the plan y uh, the frictions regulation bias etc this is the very very important factor because whenever you are starting a new project you have to have about the government rules regulations and what is that the considered can be as a frictions so for example uh, whenever you are using the patient data by ethics ethics and rules you can't reveal their names okay for example if 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 in any other ethical issues like uh, uh, if you are using certain uh, certain uh, tools and methodologies to develop certain algorithms so whenever you are tying up with hospitals the the tools the instruments you are following that should be completely non invasive to human tissues and you have to provide the declarations whenever you are meeting the tie up so you can see in our case we have used the white light spectroscopy which is completely non invasive to human body so the wavelength range will be 400 to 700 nanometer which we will discuss in the due course so financial risk definitely definitely lack of funding can, sometimes can uh, uh, can stop your project so so these are the risks because in healthcare projects are quite expensive and you require adequate funding to to uh, make further progress and to make execution risks limiting factors as i told that the time uh, time frames were there with the pro provider very very important thing because with the resource mapping it's not only about to uh, to onboard the experts on 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 your on your team but as well as you have to distribute the work on a skill matrix matching basis across the group any top organization whether it is mit harvard or stanford university or whether it is uh, google or facebook everybody works in its skill matrix matching basis so for example a, 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 a people named x is very strong in analytics people named y is very strong in app android app development people named z is very very strong in marketing so these three people will come together and and build a team and there will be a project supervisor over there who will will take care of the project outcomes on a timely basis so this is called skill matrix matching the technical term so in this way you can overcome that the 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 challenges the frictions you face while while executing certain projects so problem canvas so this is very very important so uh, this is i have i have made this particular sheet on the basis of deploying ai in agriculture domain so what if if we can if we can map the same problem if if uh, in the healthcare domain you see sensor sensors are always important in terms of the data data aggregation because these these are the resources of the data collections ai our analytical tool crowd sourcing is a good way of the data collection strong um, and these are very very potential solutions and now the problems for example if we ai in agriculture domain if we deploy them there are potential problems like greenhouses crop predictions fine farmer finances weather stations so what will be the case if i map the same problem in case the healthcare so first of all for example you, you consider that we are solving a problem like ai based early stage cancer diagnosis so what will be the case so for early stage cancer diagnosis uh, you know that biopsy is now uh, now considered as a gold standard so what is the accuracy level of the biopsy unfortunately the accuracy level of the biopsy is 65 to 70% and it has it, 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 it i mean it is not even uh, i mean uh and not uh, for example people from the lower uh, lower uh, lower financial background uh, lower income background a lot of people sometimes are not being capable of to afford it so the problems are like one one can be uh, the financial uh, financial factor is one of the problem second is one is the uh, your accuracy level 
okay the uh, and then that and the third one is the is the uh, uh, um, i mean lower reach towards the bottom of pyramid so these are the possible problems so can we overcome these particular problems with the with the solution canvas mapping so that's it okay so it is buffering now my case that is connected with the internet so the screen will appear soon uh, so uh, it is buffering now so in the next slide you will see there is a solution canvas so in what, what dimension we can we can provide the solutions so uh, for example we have talked about there are problems with the accuracy level there are problem with the treatment cost okay so the major motto what what the government of india and across the globe the governments are thinking about that the different different governments that how we can provide a low cost solutions to 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 to, uh, to bring the affordable healthcare towards the uh, bottom of pyramid section so if if ai with any any kind of smartphone based solutions we can develop okay so so what will happen it it it, 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 it can create uh, it can enhance the accuracy level you can achieve a 90 to 95% accuracy by deploying ai it can generate report within 5 minutes or within 2 minutes where biopsy takes several week times at least 2 weeks time to come up with with the report and obviously this healthcare based solutions ai based solution will be the low cost one because you will see in the for example you have uh, 2016 mit come up with a motto that softwares are the new hardwares so what does it imply but because if you can replace the hardware with your software system software based approach it, it can reduce the expensive cost expense expenses of your product product development in a some sort of way so this kind of the software based approach can reduce make the reductions in the the in the in the in the, in the, in the generation so this is the way you can actually create impact in the low cost solutions oh, so it and it's still buffering so hello Hiroksha, should I should I stop here and again upload the presentation? It is still buffering. It is not appearing in the the screen. It's not appearing. Uh, yes, so I am what I am doing. I am. Uh, okay, I am okay. Okay, great. So 
it has finally appeared so i am going to the slides where we have left earlier uh, so now solution canvas for example you can see in the solution canvas we have discussed about about the solutions in terms of ai in in ai in digital uh, i mean agriculture domain so you see the constraints are cost time and impact okay you will be provided a certain sort of budget okay and we along with that particular budget you have to provide the optimal solutions provided that this particular solutions is impactful so there are the scenarios so if we can map the same thing for the ai in healthcare domain so what will be the approaches for example as i mentioned that it will be the low cost affordable healthcare domain so for example higher accuracy okay okay uh, the bottom up approachable for the bottom of pyramid people okay and and generate report within few minutes so in this way you have to design the scenarios that which that the scenarios you want to match up with your solutions so this will be a proper planning that's look i have a certain sort of budget this amount of the budget Project. okay so we, i have two to three years to make to implementation of this particular project okay and and in this way in this way i can create impact these are the scenarios these are the time constraint okay these are the budget constraint constraint and under this some circumstances can you create impact on on the domain in a, in a proper manner impactful manner so this is the solution canvas so now the gradually your picture the picture will be clear to you and your team that we, well we are proceeding or we are, our thought process is correct or not so whatever may be your your, your maybe novel intention you, you may you may imply on but if if your your thought process is not really clear it, it, it will not be a possible to deliver the project in a successful manner so that's why philosophy every time whenever all of a lot of the discoveries whatever the scientific discoveries has made till the so far so far the philosophical aspect is the, is a prime prime thing so next thing what we will see this is the finding plot you see now every picture is clear do you know the problem canvas you have done the done the mapping to the towards the solution canvas of those particular problems so you can time and cost provide a time and cost you can map map down those factors in a in a in a, in a, in a graphical manner look we are providing we are touching this this particular domain we are providing this this amount of the solutions we are okay this a b c d whatever the point we have decided so far what are the what are the current market barriers we are overcoming what are the challenges in terms of the technologies we are overcoming okay we are touching this this scientific scientific impactful solutions okay we are doing that so in this way the whole picture whatever the project you want to solve is becoming clear to you and your team so that is what one of the important factors so if you want to create impact on the on the on the billions of lives so these are the background work is always very very important and very very impactful so milestones so basically map map of users resource requirement dependencies risks and work arounds steps and decision points so we have we have we have we know that what are the potential users doctors hospitals Uh, nursing homes medical clinics patients they will use it okay resource requirements so we, we we know that we have to onboard data scientists we have to onboard android app developers we may have to take the help from the photonics people uh, we may have to take people uh, people, uh, people uh, help from the biomedical engineering domain people so these are the resource resource requirements uh, apart from the grant requirements so either you can approach to private agencies or government agencies okay dependencies so dependencies means what what you have to out outsource okay so you may have to collaborate some other institute for the for the data collection purpose you may have to call tie up with different hospitals and doctors for their input purpose because in medical domain remember that doctors are the ultimate decision makers okay because the product when they will pass the alpha alpha testing and beta testing phase of the product the doctors or the physicians they will they are the ultimate decision makers that whether your product is correct or not not ai is nothing but a catalyst okay catalyst in terms of the uh, we, to give you the high precision result and also and as well as in the also playing a pivotal role in the cost reduction term so that's why i mentioned the term which has been uh, mentioned by mit in 2016 17 era that softwares are the new hardwares so why we should focus more on the software research to reduce the cost cost uh, i mean to reduce the production cost especially this is a quite effective way in the third world countries when we have the so much financial crunch and financial restrictions 
so risks and workarounds so we we have to map map the risks map um, jot down the risk factors for example uh, uh, what can be uh, what what will happen if there if the, your algorithm fails what may happen that if 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 your the plan a does not work so work around means you have to uh, you have to work on the backup plans that how you can you can you can actually you actually think of the backup plans and proceed further so the, so according to that next next steps will be will be assigned and defined and what the decision uh, you have to make the decisions according to that okay Oh, it is again buffering. So I am again re-uploading it. Let's see. So there are a few network issues uh, going on, I think, and so I the presentation is repeatedly buffering. So it is creating interruption by presentation. So I am re-uploading it again. Let's hope it did work this work this time. I think once you can close the uh, PPT, then you can uh, reopen it. Uh, and that's uh, what I, I have I done so far. I, have, I think that can be. I, I, I have closed that one earlier one, and then I am uploading it again. So it is, it is it is showing that it is uploading, but it is taking some time. So let me re-upload it again. Let's see whether. Okay, so finally it has appeared. It's not working. Ah. So we will see the what are the guidelines provided by the Helmer, who is the who is the one of the most celebrated inventors across the globe. 
and belongs to Princeton University and he is the pioneer most of uh, you are from the engineering background may be aware that the liquid crystal display LCD was was invented by him Helmer so he is one of the prime and uh, one of the most celebrated in, in, uh, inventor across the globe the like the people worships people from the science background worship uh, Einstein in a similar way people from the engineering technology background salute to this particular this this amazing inventor so he has highlighted few questions for the inventors that if you want to get success in your research career provided conditions that you are coming up with real real world solutions which can create impact on the billions of lives so you have to ask these nine question to yourselves and your team first one what are you what are you trying to do and articulate objectives without using jargon until or unless you can remove the jargon from your thought process that means you are somewhere you are obscure about what are the aims and goals of your project second one is the how is it done today what are the limits of current practice because this is this is a common thing because you you one when you have to develop certain areas which have not been worked by others so far so that's why you have to know the current developments third one what's new in your approach why do you think it will be successful so what are the new path you are choosing and how how are you are you so much sure that this particular path is going to give you the success who cares definitely who will be the potential potential stakeholders there if you are successful what difference will it make like i talked about the bottom of pyramid section so in this way you can you can think about your own your own in in your own project what are the risks and payoffs definitely the risk factor risk mapping is one of the factors that if your project fails so how what will be the possible factors which which is which is going to give you the success how much will it cost so definitely the financial factor you have to take in care of how long will it take two years or three years what will be the project project length and then what are the mid term and final exams to check for the success in the case of the product if you come up with now it is there are the alpha testing beta testing phases are there and if you are deploying it for the healthcare domain so doctors are going to make the final decisions so these are the guidelines okay so our philosophical part is completed now we will jump towards the science okay so this is the lean canvas whatever we have discussed so far problem domain solution domain we have talked about key matrices we have talked about the channels this is the go to customer strategy how can you um, you can approach your stakeholders through your products customer segment section unfair unfair advantages one thing a cost structure revenue streams we will gradually discuss in our in the uh, in the product section and unique value proposition we will also discuss in the product section so let's dive in to our science so well so in medical domain and medical technology we have we in generally take two kind of approaches one is the through imaging okay the computer vision scientist across the globe they took the help of the imaging or otherwise another approach is the spectroscopic approach so people across the globe who are they were in the physics background they mostly focus or engineering background they mostly focus on the elastic scattering spectroscopy why because elastic scattering spectroscopy has the information of the morphological changes which happen due to the progress of the diseases okay so morphological information like shape and size refractive index intercellular organelles etc micro optical property like fractal parameter dis disorder strength you can use it as a feature extraction purpose okay these parameters in elastic scattering spectroscopy is also a very very prominent approach in in people who are in the chemistry or biochemistry domain those people basically check the presence of the foreign particles with the help of the fluorescence and raman spectroscopy so they basically measure the biochemical informations but in our case as we are the uh, as being being the people from the engineering uh, engineering and physics background i or i i wholeheartedly follow the elastic scattering spectroscopy approach so light scattering based in in, in inverse analysis models quantification of the sub diffraction changes in tissue refractive index fluctuation what does it imply so when disease progresses in our human body so there is a sub micron level changes in the medium refractive index fluctuations due to broken collagen fibers okay and that can be pointed out towards the fractal based approach 
okay because you see whenever you are doing the data analysis you have to choose a, such a such a in, such a intuitive feature extraction tool which actually can justify the analytical behavior so in 2006 although this paper was not related to uh, hardcore machine learning but this is the very very important paper in terms of the biomedical biomedical domain if you can consider about biophotonics or biomedical engineering this prl paper has introduced first time fatality in healthcare domain in 2006 which are, which is the motivation behind us to explore further in this particular domain because our biological tissues have the same similar structure what we call fractals okay like i have mentioned here the special distribution of the refractive index in biological tissue of this self self affinity or self similarity okay and this can be analyzed through fractal brown approximation now what is brown approximation what is the essence of it so basically people who are working who, who are from the electrical engineering background or ele electronics communication engine background and who have explored in the in the microwave domain they are quite aware that that basically when we when is when we shine the light okay so light hits the target the some sort of the light will be absorbed by the target and some sort of will be backscattered okay and we will capture that backscatter of the reflected back light through our spectrometer okay so uh, <clears throat> the, the brown approximation suggested that instead of looking on the total field just concentrate on the incident field okay this incident field will give you the information about the the prominence prominent scattering zones okay so this prominent scattering zones now if for example if somebody has a skin cancer or oral cancer if you shine the light in the infected lesions so what will happen your protein lipid part of the body will absorb the some portion of the light and few portion of the light will be backscattered so you will capture that information so that your information will be wavelength versus intensity so if you if you use the wide light spectroscopy so it will be 400 to 700 nanometer range of wavelength so within that particular wavelength range you will you will capture the uh, corresponding intensity and then you will analyze the data so basically so what will be the approach because monofractal may not be realistic for the bio medical tissues having wide range of the dimensions because you remember that we have to take the small scales and have to check the local behavior okay so in due to these reasons the multi-scaling exponent and multi-resolution analysis is one of the effective ways to to make the potential contribution here so okay so the equation has overlapped with the document somehow so basically uh, the fractal self similar and multifactal so fractal self similar or self similarity process or the geometry this is basically a repeating pattern self similarity uh, means the repetitive pattern in your tissue tissue structure okay so fractal dimension implies that it will measure the space filling caps capacity now basically it, it it gives you the power law behavior so if you have new if if you if, if, if the if the if the mu you consider as your special frequency to mu to the power gamma so this gamma factor what is this the gamma value this gamma value is nothing but 2h plus d the equation has overlapped with the original dim original vortex body so here d is the Euclid euclidean dimension and the and the harsh exponent is the is the measure of the self similarity so the value lies between 0 to 1 because self similarity means it will do the measurement of the correlation so obviously as uh, from our common sense it, it will lie between the 0 and 1 and the fractal dimension the formula of computing fractal dimension is d minus h plus 1 so look this particular slide is very very important slide because you see there are very 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 few prominent uh, concepts of, 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 of our engineering is there so first of all I, most of you are aware about the convolution theorem right so what does convolution theorem implies convolution theorem states time there are two, two categories of convolution theorem time convolution and frequency convolution since in the time convolution we come to know that if if two signals are the convoluted format in the in the in the spatial domain or time domain it will be a multiplicative format in the frequency domain right so we all know that in our real world scenario that that noise noises are i mean um, i mean omnipresence you see so in, in in the terms of the engineering we know that noise means unwanted signals interference of the unwanted signals which contaminate the original signal so 
for example you, if you if you have a handheld device devices like mobile phone and you, you want to make that on 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 live data in vivo database database uh, classifications or judgment on whether this particular patient has a has a cancer or not so what will happen there will be interference of the stray lights with the original light which will contaminate the original signal your backscatter spectra okay so first of all you have you have to you have to do the fourier pre processing because what will happen in the special domain you know that when the signal is contaminated with noise in a convoluted format it's very difficult to difficult to uh, remove them so if you convert in the in the frequency domain so it will become in the multiplicative format so you can easily remove them this is the first point and this and then the second point is that the people from the computer science and information technology background they are quite aware that whenever we processed for example i have n by n images okay now i want to write a code so we go for the nested for loop okay for i equals to 1 to n for j equals to 1 to n now what does what does it do it basically enhances your complexity of the algorithm order of n square in that case so what will happen if we can unfold them remember that nowadays we talk about uh, ian lekun and a lot of lot of foreign scientists but remember that in even in the 1940s and 1950s our indian scientists are very much capable of doing this kind of stuffs they have not given the name like deep learning they have not given the name like uh, reinforcement learning so we don't consider them as the godfather but but they they are aware of the tricks of like unfolding in the linear algebra which is the one of the most prime zone of the ai that is that is that we know that the back, we call it vectorization we unfold it for example in the first row you have abc in the second row you have the elements like df what if we can concatenate these two rows in a horizontally or vertically so what will happen it will become abc df so now your order of complexity reduces from order of n square to order of n so ai is not about predicting the accuracy but to deal with the time complexity as well so once you can reduce the time complexity so nowadays we are talking about edge computing for computing it will be very very helpful because in for example if you are using mobile device for the computational purpose you will not have the not same have processor the power support what we get uh, get get in case of the desktop so you have to use this kind of tricky algorithms to unfold the image so you have 2d image so we are unfolding the 2d image in a 1d signal single kind of things so then we are doing the fourier pre processing and the fourier pre processing we can see there are multiple power law behaviors okay there are multiple power law behaviors so that may be the significance from the earlier slide we have seen that monofractal can't have the multi multi multiple power law behavior so only multifractal can have that so is there any multifractality can we test that so in the next slide if we go we'll come to see that how multifractality is helping us to under understand the behavior pattern within a signal so basically you see here what we are doing what is the mean, meaning of the detrending so basically we are removing mean from the original data and we are taking the cumulative sum so it is generating the random walk basically what we call the profile generation and in the next step now remember that we are we are segmenting the original n original n, n data set into n ns ns part s is the length of each segments where the order of movement is q okay now one thing you, you must remember that negative value of the order of moment will show you the small scale fluctuations which will be very very uh, important because in the next in next few slides we will come to see how the magic is being done by the small scale value of the q order of exponent uh, i'm sorry uh, order of moments so basically then you see we have there are basic formulas of the computing of the fluctuation functions but f q of s okay the fluctuations function of the q at order of moment is proportional to the scale to the power h q now we know that h q is the q at order has exponent which basically measures the value of the self similarity generate log 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 plot okay to check whether that particular data or whether that particular signal has the multifractality or not so tau of q is your scaling exponent so tau of q can be computed by q into hq minus 1 formula okay derivative of uh, tau, uh, tau of q will give you the singularity spectrum with value alpha value that is a very very prominent thing in terms of judging the tissue surface heterogeneity so we will see how we are mapping this particular parameters as a feature extraction tool to explain the biological phenomena because until or unless you can you can you can you can explain the biological phenomena whatever the tools you may use whatever the methodology you may use that will become the obsolete you may get certain result but 
interpretation of the result is the most important thing. So you see, basically, uh, in the in the ln f f q of s and ln of s, if you see the plots, that the value of order of moment q zero to plus six, plus two, plus four, plus six, and in the in, in the downwards minus two, minus four, minus six. So the range of q order of moment is lying between minus six to plus six, and you can see these lines are not parallel. So it does imply that, that there is a presence of multifactality because there are multiple power law behavior. It exhibits the multiple power law behavior. If it is monofractal, then the, all those lines would have been parallel to each other. If not parallel, that is a significance uh, that signify that there is a presence of multifractality. So in the next plot, you see the interesting thing. There are two remember that there are there are there are there are grades of cancer we are discussing grade one is the early stage and grade three is the final stage now grade one and grade three we are quantifying for example figure a and figure c if you see figure b is quite analogous to figure a because scaling exponent is dependent on the hash exponent so if we consider the figure one a it will be good enough so you see when the higher order moment 0 to 10 there is not much differences between grade one and grade three but i told you in earlier slide that the negative value of, of qth order moment order of moment will signify the small scale fluctuations now you see the negative value of q in the negative value of the q section if you look there is a significant differences between grade one and grade three so what are the values you are observing here in case of the grade one it is 0.53 and the grade three it is 0 0.44 what does it imply now we are we are quantifying the the data and we are now providing the interpretation so what does it imply we have we have we have mentioned that hash exponent gives you the measurement of the correlation values so your correlation value in the grade one it was 0 0.53 in grade three in the final stage of cancer it is reduced in 0 0.44 so what does it indicate it indicates that when you proceed towards the higher grades of cancer your cell phenomena the correlation behavior among the tissues will reduce but from one particular sample, you can't make any judgment, but it is the indication, okay? Now in figure C, if you look at the figure C, there is a singularity spectrum width. I told you that this singularity spectrum width gives you the information about the tissue surface heterogeneity. Now, why the tissue surface heterogeneity happened that I told you earlier that due to progress of the diseases in the sub, Submicron level changes happen in our biological tissues, and due to and and as a consequence of it, there is a, there is a phenomena like broken collagen fiber, so which actually rises your tissue surface heterogeneity. Now, uh, now why does the biopsy can't 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 quantify them or can can't can pick 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 them up? Because that as I told you that the scaling range is very submicron level changes. Okay, so it changes in a submicron level scaling, so it is not possible. To 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 uh, to to pick up them, it can be picked up by this kind of approaches, and that too with the negative value of order of moment, not the positive value of order of moment. Okay, so in this in the figure C, you can observe that singularity spectrum with uh, singularity spectrum with plot. In grade one, we are getting value 0.69, grade 3.89. Okay, sorry, 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 extremely sorry. So it went ahead. The next slide. Oh, again buffering. So I am reloading it again. Hope it will work this time. Unfortunately, due to network issues, uh, there are a lot of many, and I have to re-uploading the PPT several times. So kindly have your patience. Hello? So it is uploading gradually. Huh? Yeah. Yes, sir.
sir uh, in the meantime i like questions to you sir some one questions yes sir yes, yes. please please ask me sir actually uh, i am belongs to electrical so i am asking to you that in this uh, current scenario i have to use some machineries like transformer or generator whatever the condition monitoring systems we have learned actually just before two and three months so it is a uh, related with a medical terminology here we you uh, told us that is uh, some disease is already happened cancer the same is there but is there any scope the predefined disease to some condition monitoring like any disease cell or the uh, blood flow relations like this definitely you see as i told you that these you, you you have to condition monitoring you have to identify the biomarker right so we are using being the people under a people from the engineering or physics background we are more concentrating on the statistical biomarker so that the tool methodology i am using and discussing here during the feature extraction purpose that is the playing the role of the statistical biomarker okay so we are predicting it in early stage so that that gradually i will come It's a fantastic question that I will gradually come. Huh? Thank you. Thanks for asking. So, if you see this figure C, you can observe that grade grade one case, the value is 0.69. In grade three, it is 0.89. So we can see whenever we are going to higher grades of cancer, okay, the surface it, it implies the surface heterogeneity increases because the broken collagen fiber phenomena becomes prominent there. Okay, so, so as I told you that from a single sample we can't make any any justifications or can't come to any conclusion. So what we are doing, we are we are checking out the mean plus minus standard deviation value. So you can you can see that although in the Hass exponent section there is a decreasing trend that it signifies that whenever you are going going towards the highest grade of cancer that there is a dec there is a decrement. In the correlation level, and in terms of the width of the singularity spectrum, you can see the increment inclination towards the singularity spectrum. With that implies that the you, the more you will go to the higher grades, the more the surface heterogeneity will increase. But you can see there are a certain level of overlapping. If you look at the standard deviation values, there are overlapping among the intermediate grades. So what does it imply? That although the phenomena is actually implying the actually actually ma matching with your matching with your physical phenomena by this by this uh, singular uh, by this MFDF algorithms, but this is not the classifier, and that's the reason you require a strong classifier to classify them, because there are overlappings of the values. So it is playing a it is a playing a very strong indicator of the of the disease progress among the among the intermediate stages we will also see one of the cases with the healthy tissues as well but mfdfa is a, is a is a potential statistical biomarker but not a classifier so this is the mapping this is the pathway what we are doing so far so elastic scattering spectra from tissues we are extracting then we are doing the fourier Domain inverse pre-processing, okay, subjected to MFDFA. Then we are we are mainly highlighting the two parameters. We are mainly spotting the two parameters. One is the Hass exponent, another one is the singularity uh, strength of multifractality. So these two parameters we are looking after. Where the Hass exponent is giving us the self-similarity measurement, whereas the strength of multifractality gives us the uh, the information about the tissue surface heterogeneity. So let's see. So this is the experimental setup. Okay, so xenon lamp is the is the source of the light. So you are shining the light. Light is hitting towards your sample target. Okay, and and few portion of the light will be absorbed by, as I told you, the protein lipid part of the sample. But there will be a certain amount of the back scattering spectra, which will be recorded through the spectrometer. And and as I told you that we are using the white light spectroscopy range, 400 to 700 nanometer. You know that if you go beyond beyond the 700 nanometer, that's the infrared range. Even if you use the near infrared near infrared Red range that that is also also harmful to our human body and if we go below the 400 nanometer range that is the ultra UV ray range or ultraviolet ray range that is also completely uh, I mean I mean that is also invasive to human body so only non-invasive part is 400 to 700 nanometer 
because you if you have to tie up with the hospitals for the data collection uh, in vitro sample or in vivo sample collection whatever you want to do so you have to first of all convince the doctor that your uh, whatever the tools or methodology you are using that is completely non invasive to human body and then you have to you have to sign the irb protocol that you are not you are not uh, expected to re to reveal the identity of any patients so everything will be done in a uh, on an anonymous way so basically this case initially whenever we were we were, were approaching certain certain uh, um, certain methodologies or tools first of all we do the lab testing so you know that whenever we are collecting the biological samples we are preserving the, the they may with some certain sort of chemicals and and in the lab so that is that is called in vitro samples so in first of all once in the dark room experiment optics experiment you, you, when once you get the success of the of this with the in vitro samples then you come up with the in vivo samples that is the live data you, you can use the ai with your smartphone and you can you can you can make the testing that well we are getting this success of the uh, look look we are getting this this percentage of the uh, accuracy or something like that so first of all lab experiment success is very very important and our approach should be the in vitro samples as i mentioned so once we get the success on the in vitro samples we went for the in vivo approach okay so after the several trial of the in vitro approaches we went for the in vivo so first of all definitely we we captured the desired desired uh, uh, spectra information then we we check that there is a multiple power law behavior okay from the fourier preprocessing from the fourier spectra so there is a chances of presence of the multifractality we can see so sample preparation so what are the sample preparation we have what we have followed so biopsy cervical for example this is one of the example i have shared so for example biopsy cervical precancer tissue slices the histopathologically characterized grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 precancer tissue so histopathology what does it imply the term histopathology implies to monitor the tissue activities due to progress of the diseases what kind of the changes may happen so this monitoring of the changes in tissues with 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 this the main target is to predict it in early stage okay so when the healthy to grade one phase you can you predict that if you can predict that you can easily cure cancer in early stage so so that that's why we, we are we are taking so much uh, talking about so much of the state of art algorithms and tools and methods so these are the age range we have considered so initially we have taken this amount of the samples uh, okay the standardized histo histological preparation of the uh, is excised tissues involving fixation dehydration so in the dehydration step we replace that the, the, the water part of the but from the tissues with alcohol okay cleaning with them okay then embedding in wax embedding in wax is important to preserve the tissue samples for a longer longer period of range and then sectioning under a rotary microtome with thickness of 5 Type micrometer, okay. A lateral dimension. These are the always, always the precisions because what are the precisions you are making when, when, when or what are the what are the sample preparations you are making while while looking while making the in vitro testing. These are very very important. So. Four four uh, four millimeter by six millimeter is followed, performing sub subsequent dewaxing de stage. So the consent, this is a very very important line. The concept, consent for the use of all intact tissues, human cervix with cancer and normal samples in our study was obtained from the ethical committee of the GSBM Hospital, Kanpur, India. Okay, so ethical committee approval. This is one of the examples that we have we have taken. We have we have collaborated with several hospitals, but this is one of the hospitals we have collaborated for the cervical cancer data set. So ethical committee approval. I, until or unless ethical committee gives you the permission, you are not bound to, or you are not supposed to take uh, the, you are, the, those acquire those data sets. So uh, once the ethical committee gives you the approval, okay, these guys are using uh, using uh, using non-invasive methods or technologies which are completely non-harmful to the human body. Let's give them the permission or approval for proceeding towards the tests. Okay, the so sample per, per, uh, sample parameters method followed. Uh, definitely there are certain guidelines will be there then then the experimental system in the experimental system what 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 type of the microscope you are using we are using differential interference quantus microscope this is one of the optimal in terms of the capturing the tissue tissue sample in uh, tissue sample pictures or the or the other informations obviously uh, and other for example uh, the spot size Definitely, the spot size information is one of the most important. The what kind of diameter you are considering whenever you are talking about the infected lesions. So we are considering one millimeter. This is the state of our standard tools. So 
so mainly our concentration uh, concent we have concentrated on 400 to 700 nanometer but due to giving some relaxations on the lower limit to upper limit we have taken 300 360 to 800 uh, on, on a rough side roughly but but whenever we have made the in vivo testing, we strictly maintain the 400 to 700 nanometer range because this 700 to 800 is the overlapping zone of near infrared range and white light. And 360 to 400 is the overlapping zone between UV and white light. In some cases, people consider that particular range, but when in vivo testing, we have we have, we have not taken any kind of risks. We have completely strict, uh, restricted ourselves between 400 to 700 nanometer range, okay? And the angle of the calibration spectral resolution was 2.5. 0 0.5 nanometer and the angle of the calibration was was basically 1 150 150 degree where we have found that we are we can able to capture the backscattered backscattered spectrum in our spectrometer in an optimum manner so this, this is the further explanation of the of the experimental setup so the lenses we have used we know that collimating lens l1 has the job to it basically makes the makes makes your ray perfectly parallel the, the, the ray what is being emitted from the light source or the collimating lens make them a perfectly parallel then then the basically the uh, the illuminating lens illuminating lens mainly 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 collect collect those those uh, those uh, um, light emitted from the aperture and mainly focus them on the on the sample tissue samples okay so mainly concentrates it on the tissue samples then the back the backscattered spectra is being collected by the lens l3 and l4 and then directly direct, directly uh, uh, project them towards the spectrometer okay so now you see we have we, we will we will investigate the investigation further investigations on the presence of the uh, multifractality on the large number of the samples so so the, the particular sample we have considered here as i told you that ln fq of s and ln s this particular plot ln s versus ln fq of s this ls stands for the scale information in fq this uh, this uh, this is the information about the fluctuations QF in the qth order moment the fluctuation information so you can see the value q value plus up to minus four range so there is there is there is no parallel lines okay so this indicates that this is the this plot is the particular proof that the existence of the multifractality because there is no parallel lines if if, if the, the four lines are parallel to each other or the five lines are parallel to each other there would be the existence of the monofractality but in case the multifractality due to small scale variations there is no no parallel lines so in case of the we have measured also the Hass exponent value singularity spectrum with for the single sample so we will observe the prominent actually in our last case also that we have seen there is a prominent changes in the negative value in the negative value of the order of moment okay we have seen there is a changes in the small scale fluctuation so we have zoomed that particular particular area and you can see you can see that once the values goes down to negative 0 to 10 much changes of the value or in, in 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 the fluctuation there is a deviation value of the detended plot or fluctuation part in in uh, in this particular uh, from particular signal so you see that the, the consistency of the multifractal trends if we can observe the normal now you see we have introduced the normal normal means he healthy grade one and grade two at the early stages and grade three is the final stage so you see 0.63 the value reduced to 0.41 so we can see there is a decreasing trend for sure that means reduction of the correlation level from the high correlation level to low correlation level as exponent value greater than 0.5 implies the highly correlated less than 4.5 means anti-correlated so once the disease progresses there is a certain amount of the reduction in the correlation singularity spectrum width what does it imply it does it imply that 0.86 it has a increasing trend from healthy to grade 3 of the cancer so we can see there is a there is a change in the surface heterogeneity that means the surface heterogeneity increases due to the, the prominence occurring of the broken collagen fiber in the tissues so uh, but the, the the main concern is that there are overlapping factors in terms of the uh, uh, standard deviation values so due to overlapping factors your mfdfa methodologies or tool can't classify but it can it can actually explain what is the physical phenomena is happening it can a prime indicator it can play a strong statistical biomarker role that from where you can pin 
point that from healthy to disease disease progress region okay if you consider these two parameter the reduction in the correlation level and enhancement in the in the in the tissue surface heterogeneity from normal to grade one is the indicator of the early stage disease progression okay there is some abnormality thing is happening in your tissue but to classify among this among the different grades of grades of the grades of the tissues so you have to deploy some sort of the uh, machine learning algorithms but multifactor dependent fluctuation analysis which is being considered as the strong long linear dynamics tools or methodologies it can actually pinpoint the the the, uh, the statistical biomarker on the disease progress section between normal to healthy uh, healthy to grade one and intermediate stages of the cancers okay so again the display is gone okay so i have to re-upload it again